This video is for section 9.4, naming and writing formulas for acids and bases. The learning goal is to be able to determine the formula and the name of an acid using three rules. Let's take some notes on that learning goal. An acid is an ionic compound made from hydrogen cations with various anions. If the compound is in solid form, it is typical to use the same naming system discussed in section 9.2. For example, HF is called hydrogen fluoride, and H2SO4 is called hydrogen sulfate. But when dissolved in water, it is typical to name the acid differently. For example, the HF would be called hydrofluoric acid and the H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. This naming system for acids uses three rules. Here's rule number one. If the acid's anion ends in ide, then name the acid using the prefix hydro, the stem of the anion's name, and the suffix ic, followed by the word acid. Here's some examples. Hydrogen chloride has the formula HCl. When hydrogen chloride is dissolved in water, we name it using the acid rules. Because the anion ends in ide, rule number one applies. Start the name with the word hydro, take the stem from the word chloride, which is the chlor, and end it with ic, it's hydrochloric acid. That was the first acid we used this year in a lab. Next, hydrogen iodide, or HI. Because the anion ends in ide, the name of the acid starts with hydro, then take the stem from the word iodide, which is the iode part, and then end in ic. The word becomes hydroiodic acid. Here's rule number two. If the acid's anion ends in ite, then name the acid using the stem of the anion's name and the suffix us, followed by the word acid. Let's look at some examples. Hydrogen nitrite. It has the formula HNO2. That acid ends in ite, so rule number two applies. The stem of nitrite is the nit part, and then end in us, so it becomes nitrous acid. Next example, hydrogen sulfite. Again, the anion ends in ite, so rule number two applies. Take the beginning of that word, so the beginning of sulfite is the sulf part from sulfur, and end it with us. It becomes sulfurous acid. Next, rule number three. Because some anions end in eight, we need a rule for that. When an acid's anion ends in eight, name the acid using the stem of the anion's name and the suffix ic, followed by the word acid. Here are two examples. Hydrogen nitrate. This ends in eight, so rule three applies. Take the stem from this word, which is the nitr part, and end it with ic. It becomes nitric acid. Next example, hydrogen sulfate. This ends in eight, so it's rule three that applies. Take the beginning part of that word, the sulfur, the sulfur part, and end it with ic it becomes sulfuric acid. So to name acids, you use three rules, and your focus is on the ending of the anion. Does it end in eight? Does it end in ite? Or does it end in ide? Based upon those endings, apply what the rules say to come up with the name. Here are some check for understanding questions. Write the acid's name by applying those three rules. I'll pause the video for you to work on these, and then we'll discuss them. Here are the answers. For all of these acids, you first need to know the original way to say it, because it's the ending of the word that's going to determine what rule to use. HBr is hydrogen bromide. It ends in ide, so it's rule one. Rule one is the acid name that starts with hydro and ends in ic. It's hydrobromic acid. Number two, HCN. That's hydrogen cyanide. It ends in ide, so again it's rule one. 
The name starts with hydro and ends in ic. Hydrocyanic acid. Number three, this one here is hydrogen phosphate. It ends in eight, so it's rule three. Rule three says the name ends in ic. Phosphoric acid. No hydro this time. Number four, this one here doesn't have a formula. This already gives us the name, which is helpful. It ends in it, so it's going to be rule two. Rule two is the one where the word ends in us. Phosphorus acid. What you were just practicing was writing the name of an acid when given its formula. We can do the reverse process. Write the formula when given its name. To do this, use the same three rules. Here are some check for understanding questions. Write the acid's formula by applying those rules. I'll pause the video for you and then we'll discuss them. Here are the answers. If an acid is named carbonic acid, if it ends in ic, then the original anion ended in eight. That original anion had to have been carbonate. And carbonate is on page 268. We can find the formula for carbonate. This is an acid, so it automatically starts with hydrogen. Then let's put the symbol for carbonate, which is CO3. Finally, let's balance the charges. Carbonate has a negative two charge, so we need to have two hydrogens to balance. The answer is H2CO3. Number two, ethanoic acid. This word ends in ic, so the original anion ended in eight. It must have been ethanoate. That's also on the page 268 chart. So an acid begins with hydrogen. Now write the formula for ethanoate. It is C2H3O2. Ethanoate has a negative one charge, so it only will take this one hydrogen to balance with it. Here's the formula for ethanoic acid. Number three, hydrobromic acid. This one starts with hydro and ends in ic. So the original anion was the kind that ended in ide. It must have been bromide. This one is not the page 268 chart. Page 268 were the polyatomic ions, the ones that ended ite in eight. Bromide is straight off the periodic table. It comes from bromine. The symbol is the Br. So it's an acid. Start with an H, then put the Br. Now let's balance the charges. Bromide has a negative one charge, so it only takes one hydrogen to pair with it, HBr. Finally, number four, hypochlorous acid. This word ends in us, so the anion ends in ite. It must be hypochlorite. That word is on page 268. So start with hydrogen, then write the formula for hypochlorite. It is ClO. ClO has a negative one charge in the corner, so it only takes one hydrogen to pair with it. It's HClO. We were just discussing acids, so let's define what an acid is. An acid is a compound that produces H plus ions when it's dissolved in water. There's another type of compound that can be contrasted with acids. Those are bases. A base is a compound that produces OH negative ions when it's dissolved in water. So an acid produces hydrogen ions, a base produces hydroxide ions. Let's look at some examples. H2SO4 is an acid because each formula unit produces two hydrogen ions and one sulfate ion when dissolved in water. If you take this substance, which is like a white powder, and you dissolve it in water, it's going to dissociate into free ions. Every formula unit of this will create two hydrogen ions. Therefore, it's an acid. Now, here's another example. 
NaOH is a base because each formula unit will produce one sodium ion and one hydroxide ion when dissolved in water. If you take some NaOH in its solid form, it'll be little like pellet things, and you dissolve it in water, it will dissociate into the sodium ions and the hydroxide ions. Because it makes the hydroxide ions, it's called a base. So you got that? The acids make the hydrogen ions, the bases make the hydroxide ions. Here are some check for understanding questions. Determine if the compound is an acid, a base, or neither. I'll pause the video for you to work on these. Number one is a base. Notice the hydroxide in that formula. Number two is a base. Again, notice the hydroxide. Number three is a base. It has hydroxide. Number four is an acid. It starts with hydrogen. And number five is neither. When this is dissolved in water, it'll make sodium ions and it'll make chloride ions, but it's not going to make hydrogen and it's not going to make hydroxide. This concludes the video about acids and bases.